Hi again. We're in Chapter 5 of Jehovah's Witnesses and Pr Prophetic Speculation by Edmund Gross. Uh, the chapter heading is The Witnesses' Position on the Last Days and Armageddon, An Illusion of Urgency. We're in Part 3 of that chapter, which is covering the years 1900 to 1919. In 1904, Russell stressed the importance of 1910 to 1912. And there's a quote from The New Creation, his book published in 1904, the last of the six volumes of the Studies in the Scriptures. In that book, he said, According to our expectations, the stress of the great time of trouble will be on us soon, somewhere between 1910 and 1912, culminate, culminating with the end of the times of the Gentiles, October 1914. The beginning of the severity of the trouble is not distinctly marked in the scriptures and is rather conjectural. We infer that so great a trouble, so worldwide a catastrophe, could scarcely be accomplished in less than three years, and that if it lasted much more than three years, no flesh would be saved. So it's very obvious that they expected the worst by 1914. A number of statements Russell made in 1914, 1915, and 1916 in reference to Armageddon and the establishment of Messiah's kingdom are significant. And this is May 1st, 1914, from Watchtower reprints of that year. There is absolutely no ground for Bible students to question that the consummation of this gospel age is now even at the door, and that it will end as the scripture scriptures foretell in a great time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. We see the participants in this great crisis banding themselves together. The great crisis, the great clash, symbolically represented as a fire that will consume the ecclesiastical heavens and the social earth is very near. And this from September 1, 1914. While it is possible that Armageddon may begin next spring, yes it is purely speculation to attempt to say just when. We see, however, that there are parallels between the close of the Jewish age and this gospel age. These parallels seem to point to the year just before us, particularly the early months, that is, the early months of 1915. And again, from December 14th, 1914, this one got into the New York Times. I don't know if it was an ad or how it got there, but it's it's cited from the New York Times, December 14, 1914. Few of the awakening ones realize that the present war, which had broken out just a few months earlier, is permitted for the weakening of the nations, preparatory to the utter collapse of the present order of things and the ushering in of the new order, the reign of righteousness under Messiah's kingdom. And then again from Watchtower, April 1, <laughs> significant date perhaps, 1915, April 1, 1915. The Battle of Armageddon, to which this war is leading, will be a great contest between right and wrong and will signify the complete and everlasting overthrow of the wrong and the permanent establishment of Messiah's kingdom or Messiah's righteous kingdom for the blessing of the world. Our sympathies are broad enough to cover all engaged in the dreadful strife as our hope is broad enough and deep enough to include all in the great blessings which our master and his millennial kingdom are about to bring to the world. And again, from just before Russell dies, September 1, 1916, we see no reason for doubting, therefore, that the times of the Gentiles ended, ended in October 1914, and that a few more years will witness their utter collapse and the full establishment of God's kingdom in the hands of Messiah. And again, sometime during the war, which isn't specified here, the present great war in Europe is the beginning of the Armageddon of the scriptures. It will eventuate in the complete overthrow of all the systems of error which have so long oppressed the people of God and deluded the world. We believe the present war cannot last much longer until revolution shall break out. That's from Pastor Russell's sermons during that period. Gross goes on to say, The Finnish mystery, stated to be the posthumous work of Pastor Russell on page 2, applies the events formally scheduled to come in 1914 and before to the period of 1918 to 1925. 
when some of the explanations given in the first edition did not transpire, as predicted, a later edition, the edition used was dated 1926, altered the statements and dates, and quotations from this volume, with changes noted, are given here without comment. Here's the direct quote. The spring of 1918 will bring upon Christendom a spasm of anguish greater even than that experienced in the fall of 1914. The travail that is coming is to be upon nominal Zion, that is Christendom, Babylon, and it will be a great and sore affliction, a time of trouble such as was not since there was a nation. And this from page 542. The other one was from page 62 of the finished mystery. This is page 542. As the fleshly-minded apostates from Christianity, siding with the radicals and revolutionaries, will rejoice at the inheritance of desolation that will be Christendom's after 1918, so will God do to the successful revolutionary movement. It shall be utterly desolated, even all of it. Not one vestige of it shall survive the ravages of worldwide all-embracing anarchy in the fall of 1920. The 1926 edition reads, instead of giving the date in the fall of 1920, in the end of the time of trouble. And this from Finished Mystery, page 404. Pastor Russell's mission, in large part, was to advise Christendom of its impending end in the time of worldwide trouble. It is the divine judgment upon the nations. There will be no chance of escaping from destruction through the nations. The trouble is due to the dawning of the day of Christ, the millennium. It is the day of vengeance which began in the World War of 1914 and which will break like a furious morning storm in 1918. And this one from page 178 of The Finished Mystery. Some interesting developments in connection with the setting up of the kingdom may occur in 1920, six years after the great time of trouble began. It would not be strange if this were so, when we recall that after 40 years wandering in the wilderness, the Israelites came into possession of the land of Canaan after a further six years. As these matters are still future, we can but wait and see. We anticipate that the earthquake will occur early in 1918 and that the fire will come in the fall of 1920. These are comments, by the way, on the, the predictions of Revelation 11, verse 13. The 1926 revised edition reads, and that the fire will follow in due course. The original had said the fire will come in the fall of 1920. And then this from page 569 of the Finished Mystery. The, this vision of the prophet Ezekiel depicts the established theocratic kingdom of God on earth, civil and religious, spiritual and earthly. The temple is a type and symbol of better things to come after the wars, revolutions, and anarchy of the period from 1914 to 1925 have passed. The 1926 edition revised the last part of that to read of the time of trouble have passed so it moved from a type of symbol of better things to come after the wars revolutions and anarchy of the period from 1914 to 1925 have passed to of the time of trouble have passed so the precise precise dates were removed and then Gross comments on February 24th, 1918, Judge Rutherford delivered for the first time the lecture that later became entitled Millions Now Living Will Never Die. This was followed by a Millions Now Living Will Never Die campaign from 1918 to 1921 and a book by the same title. The stage was being set for the new emphasis on 1925. Till next time we'll take up the predictions Rutherford and his cohorts made during that period from 1920 to 1929. I'll put in a link to a video we did on the Finnish mystery about C.T. Russell personally being the modern Ezekiel, among other grand titles given to him. One of them was, by the way, God's voice. So Charles Taze Russell the Modern Ezekiel, and also a link to the playlist of which that is a part. That playlist is entitled, Have Jehovah's Witnesses Ever Been God's Organization? See you soon.